Welcome to episode three of Liquid Velvet Literature with your host, the Midnight Mauler. All right. Welcome back to Liquid Velvet Literature's third episode on Prose Radio. If it's your first time here and you find yourself coming back and you like what you hear, like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell notification so you can be notified when we air new content. This is a small part of Ask the Dust by John Fonte, hands down my favorite writer of, how can you say that, right? What's your favorite song? Just depends on your mood, but I will say when I read The Road to Los Angeles and then Ask the Dust, I was a young man and I was completely floored by his style and I could not get enough. And this is one of the parts of the book that really kind of taught me it's okay to say whatever you want as long as it's beautiful. And if it's not, it still can be. So this is from Ask the Dust by John Fonte. The night came slowly, first the cool odor of it, and then the darkness. Beyond my window spread the great city, the street lamps, the red and blue and green neon tubes bursting to life like bright night flowers. I was not hungry. There were plenty of oranges under the bed, and that mysterious chortling in the pit of my stomach was nothing more than great clouds of tobacco smoke marooned there, trying frantically to find a way out. Let's talk about regret. A little bit about regret. One of my favorite things about this site, Prose, is you can create challenges for writers to enter if you're a, a certain tier on the site, I guess you would call it. And I think this is a really great challenge by Beatrice Gomes. I will link her in the description below, but it's about regret. And the challenge says, regret. Resolutions are great and all, but tell us about a great regret from your past or your characters. This is Mass, and this piece is called Slumber. It was the way the life faded from your eyes. They were reddened and inflamed, glistening like rubies that had fallen into the sea. They were fixed on me until they drifted off into space, aimless and tired. And then there was stillness, the silence. The tree outside your window cast a shadow over your body as though it were an omen for what was to come. You were a farm girl raised from the earthly soil and would return there without a fight. How peaceful you looked, how serene, content as though life were a mere process of sowing your impression upon our psyches and that, with your absence, we could all finally reap the benefits. On the day of your burial, it began to rain. The dry, blind earth could not differentiate the rainwater from our tears. The memories came flooding back and everything around me dissipated. If these images were merely the residue of your physical existence, then so be it. They were pure and they were beautiful. You spread yourself out like a fog and I felt you permeate through everything, absolutely everything. The changing leaves and birds soaring through the sky and... Most of all, our daughter. Her eyes are crystalline and piercing, just like yours. We never fully understood each other, but I loved you all the same. Your impression left an impact on me, and in that sense, these mere after-images aren't so different from when you were still here, breathing and sitting right next to me. I look back and know there are things I should have done differently. I should have told you that I loved you more. I should have told you that I appreciated it when you tended the garden. I should have told you that your favorite suntan dress was gorgeous instead of tacky. I should have thanked you for looking after our daughter when I was tired from work. I should have done a lot of things. But all that is over now, and they are not the worries of those who are eternally slumbering. Please close your eyes and rest. And this next one is by Mortal Grave. It's called My Fate, This Appetite. 
My mouth is not designed for air or things as silly as food. It is designed to beg, plead, swallow every lie, every pretty word thrust further and further into my guts until it is part of me too, just another of my own beliefs, the rest thrust to the side, behind my liver, by this intruder's indiscriminate spray. It coats my insides, sickly sweet, sometimes too bitter and salty to keep down when it's not plugged inside. After, my throat must learn to accept only oxygen once again. Only oxygen feels like failure when he is standing over me, dripping, twitching, waiting for this warm, wet orifice to open once more so that he may relieve himself of his frustrations. Those tears are just so much lube. Please are successfully silenced. What words could possibly matter more than his need? Until the very end, my lips open wide for those that would endanger me otherwise, drooling a vacant brain, loving, despite never having known what such a feeling feels like. What worth is there in a body when it isn't usable? What use is there when these lips are locked shut? Life is performance and competition. The worst, the best, they are the same. One, a savior from obsolescence, the other an eternal charade.